I invite you to stand as you are able and turn to face the baptismal font. This is the day the Lord has made. Glad in it. This is a special day in the life of Peace Lutheran Church as they have called me to be their next pastor. I appreciate you all here to celebrate with the entire body of Christ the special day. Uh, we welcome Pastor Troy Jacobson from Good Samaritan in Lexington Park, who is the Dean of the Maryland Conference, and my good friend and fellow ULS graduate, Pastor Alex Stahl, who will be proclaiming the gospel and word today. So let us begin with our um, Thanksgiving for baptism. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light, and our salvation. Amen. Joined into Christ, in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family, through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us as your children, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now you may turn back to the big screen and join in our opening hymn. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Almighty God, through your Son, Jesus Christ, you gave the holy apostles many gifts and commanded them to feed your flock. Inspire all pastors to proclaim your word diligently and your people to receive it willingly, that finally we may receive the crown of eternal glory through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says God the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Word of God, word of life. The psalm for today is 121. A reading from St. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. Therefore, since it is by God's mercy that we are engaged in this ministry, we do not lose heart. We have renounced the shameful, underhanded ways. We refuse to practice cunning or to falsify God's word, but by the open statement of the truth, we commend ourselves to the conscience of everyone in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing clearly the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves. We proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, light will shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. But we have this treasure in clay jars so that it may be made clear that this extraordinary power belongs to God and does not come from us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair 
persecuted but not forsaken, struck down but not destroyed, always carrying around in the body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be made visible in our bodies. For we who are living are always being handed over to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus may also be made visible in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. Word of God, word of life. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from supper, took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. And for this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. And after he had washed their feet, had put on his robe and had reclined again, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, slaves are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Very truly I tell you, whoever receives one whom I send receives me, and whoever receives me receives him who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. My mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. The story that we just read in the gospel today, the story of Jesus kneeling and washing the feet of his disciples, is one of perhaps the most striking stories in all of the gospels. But it's particularly striking coming out of the Gospel of John. The Gospel of John presents Jesus differently than the other three Gospels. In the Gospel of John, Jesus is very much in control and aware of who he is. He's far more than the innocent suffering servant of God. But Jesus knows his mission in John. He knows his destiny, and he knows what he must do. And what he does is strip to the waist, wrap a towel around him, fill a basin with water, and serve. This act of humility on the part of this Lord, this Jesus, this man who knows who he is, 
is vivid. He serves by cleaning the dirty feet of those who have followed him on his journey of ministry throughout Judea. He serves knowing what is ahead of him in a very short time. A time, by the way, when others might seek an opportunity to make themselves scarce and a little hard to find. But the story for me is even more striking when you consider who is at the table with him. We know Peter's there. We know Peter's there because as Peter often does, he reacts and he reacts out loud. Declaring that Jesus is not going to wash his feet. I mean, after all, he is the Lord. But when he learns that foot washing here means a little bit more than simply clean feet, Peter decides that he wants to be really clean. I'll take a whole bath, he says. Jesus hears all this and patiently continues to serve, showing by example how his friends are to deal with one another. Foot washing in this story is not a magic bath. It doesn't bestow superpowers, super sainthood. It is service. It is humble service. Jesus himself says, for I have set you an example that you should also do as I have done to you. Jesus says, through his actions, care for one another. Wash one another's feet. Be humble. Now, through all this, Jesus hints that something's not right. Someone in the room is not entirely clean. But it's not until after this text that we learn that Jesus knows that he is to be betrayed and turns to a certain Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, and says, do quickly what you are going to do. Jesus washes Judas's dirty feet. The same way he washes the dirty feet of Peter, Andrew, James, and John. Jesus, stripped to the waist, serves the one who will betray him with a sign of love and caring. Jesus' example speaks volumes to us, my siblings in Christ. Throughout his ministry, Jesus did not stop before performing signs or miracles or services to see if the recipient was worthy. There were no citizenship tests. There were no belief tests. No identity challenge. There was nothing to make sure that the service wasn't going to be wasted or thrown away on somebody who didn't deserve it. Truthfully, no one deserved it. Yet all were served. Judean, Samaritan, Roman, male, female, insider, outsider, upsider, downsider. Jesus served all who came. What more example do we need? Eric, my friend, I am perhaps a little bit of an unusual choice to be preaching at your installation. After all, I have exactly one week less time in the pulpit than you do. <laughs> but very much like you, because of the process that we have just gone through together, we are very much keenly aware of the message in this gospel. I remember going through my own process, and one of the questions that my closest friends and spiritual guides asked as I went through and hit every bump in the road, can you love them? Not, do you agree with them? Not, do you like them? Are they your kind of people? Simply, can you love them? Will you be able to feed them, to pray with and for them, to baptize them, to bury the dead, 
all with love and care. So to you, my friend Eric, I say, love them. Even in the times you don't like them. Or more importantly, the times they don't like you. Remember that we are all called to serve the entire community. The whole community, not a group of identically thinking individuals. The core of our faith, yes, is loving Jesus. But even more, it means that we love Judas. We don't endorse Judas, but we love Judas. We wash Judas' feet. Many of the prayers in the service today revolve around community and unity and coming together. And Lord knows the Church of Christ on earth and the entire world needs unity. But what exactly is unity? We've been conditioned at this time in our history to think in terms of similarity or sameness. We like terms like melting pot, where a whole bunch of different people come together and shed a former identity and create a new community, a united community, with the same hopes and ideals and aspirations. Look at the news, at recent history, look at ancient history, and we might learn a little bit otherwise. <laughs> That kind of unity is at best fleeting, and human beings are seldom able to maintain it. Now, Eric, there have not been many times in my life when I have been able to turn to Star Trek <laughs> for material for a sermon. But bear with me as I explore this final frontier with you. <laughs> there was an episode in the original television series entitled, Is There in Truth No Beauty? He nods his head. He knows what I'm talking about. Mr. Spock attends a diplomatic reception in dress uniform wearing a symbol of his Vulcan philosophy. It's a medallion, a pyramid surmounted by a circle with a gem in the middle. It's called the IDIC, the I-D-I-C, and it stands for infinite diversity in infinite combination. It represents the idea that the many different races and beings and thoughts throughout the universe combine, join in innumerable ways to produce new things, things of truth and things of beauty. But at the same time, they retain their individuality. This Vulcan philosophy speaks to us as followers of Jesus today. It reminds us that unity does not always mean identity. Unity means working to find common aspirations and ideas and then struggling with and through our differences to achieve those goals together. It doesn't mean that our individual ideas and beliefs don't morph or grow or change. Now I'll switch from Star Trek to Martin Luther. Remember that God's grace is not cheap. It is not simply, here you go, take it and do what you want with it. God's grace demands and forces our transformation. In matters of faith, in matters of the commonwealth of God, we will not always see eye to eye. We will not always agree on methods or directions. There will be times of rebuke, times of conflict, times of difficulty, and times of change. But remember the example of Jesus. Through all, serve all. Even those who would betray you. Can you love them? Love them. God bless you, Reverend Eric Randolph, my dear friend, on your call and installation as pastor at Peace Lutheran Church in Waldorf. And God bless you, Peace Lutheran Church in Waldorf, 
on your calling and installing of Reverend Eric Randolph as your pastor. May you grow in service to one another and to the community in the times that lie ahead of you. May you grow in unity in the gospel, even as you are diverse in your ideas and approaches. May you be a blessing for the world. And all God's children said, Amen. Please be seated. Having been authorized by the church to install Eric Thomas Randolph, our co-worker in the gospel as pastor, I now ask for the certification 
of the call. After prayerful deliberation, we of Peace Lutheran Church Waldorf have called the Reverend Eric Thomas M. Randolph. I present him and this letter certifying the call. Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. A reading from Matthew. Jesus said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. A reading from 1 Timothy. Set the believers an example in speech and conduct, in love, in faith, in purity. Attend to the public reading of Scripture, to exhorting, to teaching. Do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you through prophecy with the laying on of hands by the council of elders. Put these things into practice. Devote yourself to them so that all may see your progress. Pay close attention to yourself and to your teaching. Continue in these things, for in doing this, you will save both yourself and your hearers. Let's bring you over here. You want to stand up here? All right. Eric, in the presence of this assembly, will you commit yourself to this new trust and responsibility in the confidence that it comes from God through the call of the church? I will, and I ask God to help me. Will you preach and teach in accordance with the Holy Scriptures and with the confessions of the Lutheran Church? Will you carry out this ministry in harmony with the constitutions of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America? I will, and I ask God to help me. Will you be diligent in your study of the Holy Scriptures and in your use of the means of grace? Will you love, serve, and pray for God's people? Nourish them with the word and sacraments and lead them by your own example in faithful service and holy living. I will, and I ask God to help me. Will you give faithful witness in the world that God's love may be known in all that you do? I will, and I ask God to help me. May Almighty God, who's given you the will to do these things, graciously give you the strength and compassion to perform them. Amen. Amen. Now, people of God, yeah, let's stand. Let's do it. <laughs> Will you receive Eric Thomas M. M. Randolph? It just says name in my binder. <laughs> Will you receive him uh, as a messenger of Jesus Christ, sent to serve all people with the gospel of hope and salvation? Will you regard him as a servant of Christ and a steward of the mysteries of God? Will you pray for him, help and honor him for his work's sake, and in all things strive to live together in the peace and unity of Christ? We will, and we ask God to help us. Eric, the office of pastor is now committed to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Yes, receive the blessing. May the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, make you complete in everything good 
so that you may do God's will, working in you that which is pleasing in God's sight. Through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. You have been called to be among us, to baptize, to teach, and to forgive sins. You have been called to be among us, to proclaim the good news. You have been called to be among us to preside at the Lord's Supper. People of God, I present to you Eric Thomas M. Randolph, your pastor. Let us welcome him in the name of Christ. (laughs) Thank you. official now. That's right. (laughs) No take backs. (laughs) Oh God, who is light in the darkness, we pray for those among us who in the night hours work their shifts or those who labor in places where light is dim. Be for them and for us protection in the dark. O God, who is the bright morning star, we pray for those among us who grieve the loss of loved ones, the tarnishing of innocence, the failing of health, the flight of security. Be for them and for us a sure defense and the promise of a new day. O God, who is sight to the blind, we pray for those among us whose eyes are clouded, who are blind in soul, mind, or body. Be for them and for us both courage and sight. O God, who is strength to the besieged, we pray for those among us who are beset by temptation, those who are in danger, those whose enemies are close, and whose help seems far away. Be for them and for us a present fortress against our foes. O God, who is salvation to the lost, we pray for those among us who have never found your way or who, having found it, have strayed from your path. Be for them and for us the beacon that guides safely home. O God, who is comfort to the fearful, We pray for those among us who live in fear of threats, real or imagined, whose lives are torn by war, whose thoughts are confused by mental illness, whose souls and bodies are ravaged by abuse. Be for them and for us consolation and surety against anxiety. Give us wisdom, O God, to turn to you in times of stress, fear, and grief in times of blindness, temptation, danger, and perdition. Grant us patience to wait for you and courage to be strong in your might. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now the peace of Christ be with you always. Please share a sign of God's Christ peace with each other.
We are a community of people who follow Jesus. We share so much with those early Christians who struggled in the work of the gospel, but also found joy in the Lord. Joy in the life they shared together. No matter that what we are carrying tonight or what we face, we are not alone in this journey. At this moment in our worship, we are invited to share what we have so that others will find the same welcome and the same joy that we know now. Today's collection will be given to Elsie's Food Pantry, the ministry of this church who feeds multiple families throughout the month and is a blessed tribute to Elsie Drawn and her work and her mission and ministry here in this place. Let us gather our gifts together and offer them to God and gratitude and praise. Please stand as you are able. 
and let us pray together. Gracious God, in your great love you richly provided for our needs. Make of these gifts a banquet of blessing and make us ready to share with all in need through Jesus Christ, who sets a table for all. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just to give you thanks and praise to you, a hymn of glory and praise, O Lord God of infinite goodness. For by the word of your Son's gospel, you have brought together one church from every people, tongue, and nation. And having filled her with life by the power of your Spirit, you never cease through her to gather humanity into one. Manifesting the covenant of your love, she dispenses without ceasing the blessed hope of your kingdom and shines bright as the sign of your faithfulness, which in Christ Jesus our Lord you promised would last for eternity. And so, with all the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, while with all the church, as one voice, we acclaim, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who loves humanity and who walks with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst when we are gathered by his love, and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, God most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit and bless these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup, gave you thanks, and gave the cup to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, God most holy, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. Grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit and your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Lord, renew your church here at Peace Lutheran Waldorf by the light of the gospel. Strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful and their neighbors, and all the shepherds of your people, together with our bishops Elizabeth and Layla, that in a world torn by strife, your people may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and concord. Remember our siblings who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to eternal dwelling place and live a life with you forever. There, in communion with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, almighty creator, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now let us pray with confidence in God in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This is Christ's table. It is not Peace Lutheran's table. It is not the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America's table, nor mine. It is his table who calls us to it with open arms and love. All are welcomed here to receive his body and his blood. body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ.
Please stand as you are able. And let us pray together. God of the abundant table, you have refreshed our hearts in this meal with bread for the journey. Give us your grace on the road that we might serve our neighbors with joy for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. I'm going to leave this all up to you, Jill. Because <laughs> I know how much you love announcements. <laughs> well, <laughs> welcome. Well, and I'm very glad to be here. And um, like we said, no backsies. <laughs> You are here, and we are so glad you are here, and we feel very blessed. Um, and once again, I thank our call committee, and I thank all of those here today uh, for coming and being a part of this wonderful uh, occasion. Um, we will be having a reception over in the fellowship hall um, next, and all are welcome to come over there and continue and welcome and celebrate. And you do not want to miss the feast that Minardo has prepared for everybody today. So it has smelled good all day. So please stand as you are able. So may the blessing of God, who calls the people out of Egypt, call us out from our comfort and our safety to embrace a journey of challenge and risk. May the blessing of the Son, who kneels and washes our feet, Call us out from our comfort and our safety to embrace and serve those we meet on the journey. May the blessing of the Spirit who weaves dreams of a new community call us out of comfort and our safety to provide welcome and hospitality to strangers as well as friends. Amen. Please join in the sending song, Blessed Assurance. The service has an ended, but now our service begins. Go in peace with Christ beside you. Thanks be to God. And now come eat. <laughs>